fall on you, God, in faith and expectation over the house, Lord. God, in your name, Jesus, Lord, we believe, God, for great things to happen in this service, Lord. We believe in your word tonight, God, your truth, God. It's forever binding, Lord. We love you, Jesus, Lord. We come to magnify you, God. We come to glorify you in this place, Jesus, Lord. We thank you, God, for another opportunity, Lord, to live for you, Jesus, Lord. We give you the glory. Honor and praise belongs to you, Jesus. In your name, let's worship the Lord tonight. Worship with us tonight.
clap our hands one more time unto the Lord. Let's thank God for Calvary. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood that was shed, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you tonight, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. We've got a few needs here tonight we need to make known. Let's remember uh, Sister Tammy Williams as we pray tonight. Uh, Carolyn Markin also needs our prayers. Uh, Sister Luella Ansel is Riverside and needs our prayers. Brother Sister Adams as well. Uh, Brother Ron Kelly. And, of course, we're going to continue to remember Brother Potts in prayer tonight. Amen. Uh, Jeff Grundy. Let's remember our sister. Let's remember her for healing and strength. Brother and Sister Adams need our prayers. Uh, Dale Spires needs our prayers tonight. Let's remember him. And Larry Carroll as well. Amen. Do we have any other urgent needs tonight we need to make known? Sister Peggy. Pray tonight. Okay, let's remember him in prayer. For the bill. John and Moore. Okay, let's remember him. Mr. Mayor. Okay, all right. Your sister Tansy tonight. Amen. Family tonight. Amen, sister. Amen. God's able. He is. He will. Here with the bread. All right. We'll remember that tonight. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's go before the Lord in prayer. prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's just trust God with the answer. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for our community, our nation. Amen. Amen. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Amen. Let's call on the name of the Lord. Jesus, we love you tonight, God. We're believing you, Jesus. We're trusting in you, God. There is no other hope like you, Lord. God, we praise you tonight. God, we ask that you would move, Lord, upon each and every need in this house, Lord, each and every life, Lord. God, that you would touch, Lord, that you would heal and strengthen, Lord. So you see Sister Tammy tonight with healing. God, we ask, Lord, for strengthening of her body, Jesus, Lord. God, we believe you tonight, God, to move, Lord, upon Larry Carroll tonight, Jesus, Lord. I pray, God, they'll smile, Lord. John no more, Jesus. God, I pray right now, God, the sister Tansy, Lord, with healing and strength up on her body. Lord, I pray, God, care to mark in Jesus. I pray for our family members tonight, God, and through every anxiety, every depression, every panic, oh God, that you, Jesus, would arise in their hearts, Lord. God, that you would send the deliverance, Lord. God, that you would deal with them, Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, they would turn to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you are the hope, oh God. God, that you would touch this nation, Lord, that you'd pour out your spirit continually, God. God, that you'd fill every hungry heart, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, believing you for great revival, Lord. We're believing you, God, to breathe upon us tonight, Lord. In the times of refresh, you will come from the presence of the Almighty God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we believe you, Lord. Every situation, Brother Brett's situation, God, every unspoken request, oh Lord, do a mighty work, Lord. Let us see the hand of the Lord. God, we're believing in you tonight, God. For who else can we turn to, oh God, but you, Lord? Lord, have the words, God. You have eternal life. You have healing, Lord. There's still power in the name of Jesus. And we thank you tonight, God. There's a blessed assurance among us, oh God. And we give you the praise, God. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord? Would you thank God for what he's done for your prayer tonight? Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I'm going to ask the ushers to come to receive this evening's offering. We're just going to continue to trust the Lord. Amen. That God knows. Amen. He knows what he's doing. Amen. Remember church coming up this weekend. Invite someone to the house of the Lord. Continue to be a vessel of the Lord and a witness for God. Amen. How many believe God's going to do what he said he would do? Amen. You still have a promise from the Lord. God's going to fulfill those promises. Amen. Praise God. Let's ask the Lord's blessings as the ushers come. Jesus, we thank you tonight, Lord. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to give to your kingdom. God, we ask that you would bless the giver, Jesus. I pray to continue to bless this church, God. Continue, Lord, to lift us up in you, God. We draw closer to you and love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, God. So we return unto you right now. 
in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Let's give unto the Lord. The ushers will come to you. Praise God. talked about and uh, we just want to move forward with that I just like to give a shout out uh, sister Rhonda is that your who is that with you it's your daughter that's what I thought she's back there waving too good to see you I like that shirt I can see that shirt really good from right we're here where I'm sitting with the lights in my eyes so that's really really nice you're welcome you're welcome good to see sister Luella here she was taken to Riverside Hospital and Praise God, they gave her a pill, and don't really know what all is going to happen with that, but I'm glad she's here tonight, and uh, praise God. Good to see Brother Potts here again. Praise the Lord. Brother Potts, we're glad you're here. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, Sister Caitlin, it's good to see you. Hi. you got to use your mic. I like saying that. Good to see you, Pastor. Uh, she calls me Pastor. She calls me daddy when she wants something. Well, let's take our Bibles tonight. We're going to uh, turn into, uh, let's see here. We're going to turn to the book of Acts. We're going to start with Acts 2.37. But while you're turning there, just so that uh, we're all clear where we started, 
On the day of Pentecost, in Acts 1, this was really the promise that Jesus talked about. Okay, And he gave his disciples the last minute instructions just before his ascension. Okay, And we'll pray in just a minute here before we really get started. But he told them to go to Jerusalem and to tarry. Now, tarry is a special word. It means more than just wait. It means wait and do what he told them to do. All right? Told him to wait, which involved what? Staying in one place. It involved praying. Uh, they worshipped. Uh, I assume that they ate something at some point during that time. I don't know if they had carry out or they probably didn't. They had carry in. Uh, but he told them to wait for the promise of the Father and that would be the gift of the Holy Ghost, okay? And so uh, there was about 500 people that saw Jesus uh, ascend, all right? Now, uh, he told that 500, and you can imagine 500 leaves and they go and they start telling about what's happening, okay? And that the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out. God's Spirit. Now, this was not, this was not some little... Oh, well, you know, Walmart's having a sale. They're always having a sale, right? TJ Maxx, do they ever have sales? Ollie's has sales. I got a, a flyer in the mail. You know we're getting an Ollie's? It's a right down by, where's it at? Right down here by El Perion. Thank you very much. And the haircut, haircut joint. Great clips. So it's down there. They're gonna, but they have sales. But they're always having sales. But, but this was something that was critical news. This was new information to them, and it was the Lord telling them that the Holy Spirit would be poured out. So there was about 120, the Bible says, on the day of Pentecost. So whatever that means, from 500 to however many they told to those that were able to endure. Now, that doesn't mean that... Uh, you know, that they didn't want to be there. I believe that there was a lot that wanted to be there. Uh, there are things in life that happen, uh, but these were the ones that were there. And there were some that made up their mind that they wanted to be there. And I will say this to us here today. If you want to be in the house of God, you can be there. Now, there may be things that come up, and we understand that. Uh, there are, you know, surgeries, and people take vacations, right? And uh, so those things happen, and I don't know that there was any vacations, but if Jesus told me that something special was going to happen, I think I would be there. So Acts 2 records that on this Jewish feast day of Pentecost, the promised spirit baptism came. And then soon all the people on the city, if they weren't there and didn't know about it, you know what? All of a sudden they did know, because the Bible says that they came out out of the upper room speaking in all different kinds of languages and if you read the list there between Acts chapter number uh, 2 verse number 5 and then on through uh, verse 36 you'll find out that there are a lot of people a lot of nations that were represented okay so this wasn't just something where somebody came out and played just started jabbering and said, hey, this is the Holy Spirit. No, it was validated. It was verified. And that's really important uh, that it was. And you know what? When God puts that together, you know, the Bible says, Corinthians, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels. And so we can know that these tongues, these languages, at least in Acts 2, they were verified. Okay? So we're going to start here and we're going to read in verse number 37 okay sister Caitlin and we're going to revisit that one so if you wouldn't mind reading that now when they heard this they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the Apostles men and brethren what shall we do let's take a minute and let's join together and pray okay let's ask God to be with us tonight Lord Jesus we thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we just give you glory and praise tonight. God, we recognize your greatness, Lord, for who you are. And Lord Jesus, we pray, almighty God, that you would send your great touch, Lord, in this house. 
God, in our minds and our hearts. God, that you would quicken, or Lord, that you would bring to our thoughts, Lord, these images, these, these words tonight, God, so that they would be valuable in our spirits and our souls. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen. amen. Now they tell me that Brother, Brother Hal used to have Bible study like this. He used to bring out a table and set it up, and he said, that was what one person told me, that he used to come out and have Bible study and sit down, and they went through the scriptures. Anybody remember that? Sister Potts remembers that. So, um, don't know if I'm Brother Howe or not, but we're going to look at the scriptures, and we're going to see what's going on. Now, this verse that we read tonight, we need to make sure that we understand its importance. We need to understand that what, what Peter was doing was he, uh, once this was done, he was going to preach the Acts 2.38 message, okay? And so I think it's, it's very important to us to, to settle on this scripture. There are a lot of people that want to uh, devalue the Spirit's work in this day and age. And I would say this here, we need to lift it up. Amen. The Holy Ghost is so very valuable and people need to know. This is a, a portion of the scripture that many people like to ig ignore or just let it go by. But I, I want to let you know it's very, very important. And then this, this question that they had in verse 37. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now, you got to understand something. This was in response to uh, the question that they had as far as you know, when Peter preached... Uh, those words in between, just before uh, verse 37, he basically preached them into a corner that they had crucified Jesus Christ, who was the Son of God that had come, who was God in the flesh, come to save us and to pay the sacrifice as only he could do. Now, there's not, uh, not even a baby. Uh, when a baby is born... Bible says, David said this, that in sin I was conceived, I was born into iniquity. And so uh, we're all born with a sinful nature. However, Jesus Christ is the only one that was never born with a sinful nature. He is the only one that is qualified. Now, when you read in the Old Testament, and a lot of people right now are looking for the uh, next red heifer that will come. And there are all kinds of rabbis that are looking right now and they're doing their best to inspect and to validate. There are rules. They can only have so many different colored hairs and, and, and they count that out. Now, let me just say this here. When it came to Jesus, they were doing their best to... Well, it was almost like he was on the witness stand his whole life. He had to prove everything that he did. Mm -hmm. And so when we look through the scripture, the Bible says that he was in all points tested. So every, every Old Testament prophecy that was, that was in the Old Testament, all of those had to be validated and tested. And you know what? God did not leave any to chance. He brought every one of those prophecies and he tested every one of them. Obviously, we don't have time to go through that tonight. But I want you to know that Jesus was like that red heifer, that he was validated. And if you'll read your Bible and you'll understand a little bit of history, uh, if you know right around 70 A.D. is when Titus uh, came into Jerusalem. He besieged the city. He destroyed the city. And uh, Jesus made some prophecies. He said that not one of these stones, and when he was talking about stones, he was talking about the stones of the temple. Not one of these stones will be left upon another. Well, how in the world would that be? You know, you go and you can find different ruins, and you just about always find uh, stones. You find the foundation that was left behind. Well, what happened was this, that when they burned the temple... Uh, there was some, a group that had hid themselves in there and they were staying out. Uh, they, were, they were saving the temple for the last thing. They, that was kind of like 
you know, uh, where they planted their flag and this is it. Well, history tells us that when they burned that temple, all of the, the gold and all of the silver that was left over that was in the building melted down in between the stones. And when the looters came in, they took axes, picks, and they, they dislodged every one of those stones and they extracted every bit of gold. Now, when you think about that, you think about Jesus' prophecy, how in the world would that ever come to pass? We see now, we look back, and, and in many cases, uh, you know, looking back is 2020. Looking forward in 2020 is certainly not anything that's predictable, okay? Certainly nothing that's predictable. And so when we look at this here and we see Acts 2.37, men and brethren, what shall we do? And so this, this context of this lets us know that Peter is about ready to tell them how can they get this sin off of their backs, off of their conscience, how can their spirits be relieved? And, and this last Sunday night, I think it was Sunday night, I was preaching and I was talking about uh, righteousness and being, uh, being saved and justification. Now, we, we'll deal with justification a little, little bit later on, but I just want to revisit this right now. You know, a lot of people talk about that justification is that when we repent, we're baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of our sins and we're filled with the Holy Ghost, that we then uh, enter into uh, the place that God intended for us to live in the gospel just as if we had never sinned, okay? But it's deeper. It's deeper than that. It's just as if we were never sinned against either. And so, you know, there are two sides to that. You know, we can do other people wrong and we can feel bad about it. But sometimes other people do us wrong and we can carry that bitterness inside of us. Um, we may never have the opportunity to get even, but even if you would sometimes, dear Jesus, help us, right? And we don't want to get even. We, wouldn't it be great if you could live a life where you never did anybody wrong and nobody ever did you wrong? Wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't that be great? Well, that just isn't always possible, right? And so let's, let's move on now to Acts 2 and 38 because this really is the crux of why Jesus came. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay. And so in our search for the biblical answer to this question, Peter did not delay his response. And so I hope everybody has this scripture marked somewhere. Because Acts 2.38, you know, as I, as I was mentioning, I heard somebody, I think of Brother Truman Hurley, a friend of mine at pastors down in uh, Florida. He had posted something today and he said this, hurt people hurt people other people but he didn't stop there he said this saved people save other people and so that's our job it's to communicate the message and the gospel of Jesus Christ now we can talk about these verses a lot but if all we do is just you know quote these to put down somebody's throat uh, then, then we've missed the spirit of the word. The spirit of the word of this is this, that people in this world are hurt. We're all damaged. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, I'm damaged goods. All oh, powerful. Hey, that was perfect timing. <laughs> well, hello there. Testing, testing. Is yours working? No. Nothing's working. We're out. We're out again. There we go. Well, I guess I'm going to have to get loud. And I can do it. <laughs> Just let me know when it comes back up. You can hear me in there? Okay. Probably got to hit those light buttons down below. Ah, oh, there it is. Where was I? Oh, the power, the spirit of these verses. 
and there are damaged people, right? We're all damaged. Look at your neighbor and tell them again. Be careful, though. Don't say it too loud because it's kind of powerful. Say, I'm damaged goods. If it, fla if it flashes again. <laughs> Don't say it again. <laughs> well, hello there. Look out. There's something about this verse, I think, that the Lord wants us to know. Uh, and, and it's very powerful. This verse was not just there to, to beat people up with. This verse was, was in response to a very intense and personal question. These folks were like, what must I do to be saved? Now that's an important question. And if we, if we, if we just use it to beat one another up or in theological debates, then, then there's an issue because it's more than that. It's about releasing somebody's spirit. It's about releasing somebody's soul so that they can live their life pain-free. Can you imagine how many people are living their lives full of pain right now? I saw something today. It was, uh, and I don't know who posted it, but, but somebody showed that there are videos right now, right on the very spot where George Floyd was killed, there are baptisms taking place. Does anybody know that? That's pretty powerful now. You know what? We can take any negative and we can, we can beat it up and we can try and get all kinds of noise and make all kinds of noise with it. Or we can use it for the kingdom of God and somebody can be saved. Well, that's what Peter was doing there that day. He told him, you killed the king of glory. But then he comes along after they said, what must we do to be saved? He said, repent. Repent. Say, I'm sorry. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. It didn't say some. And it also gave the purpose for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I'm glad I know Him. Oh, my. My series up here going off on the, on the remission of sins. That's powerful. So, as we dig on a little bit deeper here, the thing about this is that that verse, Acts 2.38, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. It is such a very, there is such a remarkable work going on in that verse. But it is so plain. It's a three-step process. It's a three-step process. It wasn't four. wasn't two. It was three. And, you know, as we look at those things and we, we think about those things, it's important that we understand that the gospel is not something that has to be overthought. This is not a theological debate, nor is it something that's just like, okay, I love Jesus. Hey, I'm saved now. There is enough to validate. Remember, remember when we talked about Jesus a few minutes ago and that, that, he validated in all points he was tested yet without sin. You know what? There is something about our spirits that, that we have to come to the point to where our salvation means something to us. So let me make sure that I, I make that clear. There's something that you will feel, that you will go through, and that you will know. It, it, it's a connection between the heart and the mind, and the spirit. This deals with all of those elements, okay? Uh, there is a, a popular commentary that states this, that we have in this short verse, the summary of Christian doctrine as regards man and God. In short, Acts 2.38 is the authoritative answer of the apostolic church to the question,